What's up you guys? Welcome back to the community of support. It's Deb here speaking to you from the void. I thought I'd try a bit of a different method today and give you all a break from my face for a bit. Also, if you're new to our channel, do not forget to click those links in the description box below and find out some more about the community of support. We are here to support those who are underrepresented in medicine. So please go ahead and subscribe and keep your eyes on our channel for, for some great new videos specific to these topics. Now today I want to talk to you about studying for the MCAT. So for those who aren't aware, the MCAT is the Medical College Admissions Test. So I'll be adding a link in the bio to give you a more detailed background of what it tests but uh, that's not really what this is about today. Today, we're going to explore the experiences of two students. Spoiler alert, one of them is me. And we're gonna look through our experience, how we wrote, uh, and yes, even the scores we got. Now, without further ado, let's get into this business. So this is my friend, Luke. Luke had wanted to go to med school since before he was in high school. He was a great student. Um, he consistently scored above a 3.5 GPA in his courses, even achieving 4.0s in multiple classes. He also had a great and diverse list of extracurriculars, so he was clearly a great candidate to apply to medical school. But now it was time to tackle the part of applying that often brings most med hopefuls to their knees, the MCAT. So Luke wrote the MCAT a few times. Uh, the first time was after his second year of undergrad. He took one of those very expensive, very structured MCAT prep courses. And even with the course, Luke wasn't able to commit to studying intensely he thinks he maybe studied a total of five full days in four months once you add the hours up. Listen, I know that there are multiple YouTube videos for how to pass the MCAT in five days, but that is very difficult to do. And it will likely be the exception and not the rule. Most people can't realistically study for the MCAT and get the mark that they need in a week. So when Luke sat to write, it didn't really feel right. He ended up voiding the exam before leaving. Uh, he just didn't really feel confident in his work. Now the second time Luke wrote, he really buckled down. He studied the notes from his prep course from the previous year and completed the sample test on the AAMC website, but he still did not reach his goal. He scored a 502. Now the third time Luke wrote was after graduating undergrad. He did things completely differently, and after three tries, he scored a 509, somewhere around the 77th percentile. Now, although this is a very respectable score, he started thinking about writing for a fourth time. Now, I met Luke in my first year of undergrad, when he was in his second year. Uh, right away, we became friends, but he also took kind of a mentor role in my med school journey. So by the time I wrote the MCAT, Luke had written multiple times, he had reflected on his mistakes, done countless hours of research, and he had writing the MCAT down to a science. And he taught me exactly how to study. Now, to be honest, I did not take Luke's advice completely. I slacked off a bit at the beginning, I spent way too much time reviewing before diving into practicing, and at the end of the summer when I wrote, I still scored a 510. That's the 80, 81st percentile. So I too started thinking about rewriting. Now whether or not to rewrite is an important decision, but more on that later. For now, let's dive into what we did wrong, what we did right, and how you can get an even better score than we did. So when you write the MCAT does depend on when you feel ready. Uh, I was told by multiple people that the best time to write was after your second year of undergrad because a lot of the time, if you're in a traditional pre-med or science heavy program, you would have taken a good amount of courses related to the MCAT. So this is totally valid and makes a lot of sense. Um, and if you feel ready to write at this time, go ahead. But I'll be honest, I was not. And neither was Luke. And I don't think a lot of people are at this point. So before you write, think about what your goals are. 
when are you going to apply? I was going to apply after graduating, so I had at least one summer after that I could write. But some people want to write early in case they don't do well so that it doesn't throw off their goal of applying in a certain year, and that also is very valid. You just have to make sure that you're being honest with yourself. Do you actually have time to devote to studying this summer? My general advice is to write when you're ready and don't feel pressured. At the end of the day, you'll only need to write it once if you do it right. So how long you study for is also dependent on how much time you have and how ready you feel. Now, most people do start studying in April or May um, and usually write sometime in August. Uh, but that's probably because most Canadian schools will only accept MCATs written before a certain cutoff date in late August. So before you decide what date to choose, you want to look into the schools you're interested in and what their cutoffs are um, if you choose to apply in that same cycle. And I don't really recommend writing during the school year when you have a full course load. It just feels like extra stress that's really just not necessary. Now, we talked about Luke's experience earlier and how it was different from mine, but before I started studying, I asked him how he thought I should approach it. And the first thing he said to me was, you have to approach this as if you were only going to write one time. So he didn't do that initially, um, but this is so important. The exam is very expensive, and I, I think I spent around $500 to $600 just to register. So not only did I not want to rewrite, I also could not afford to. So I approached this thinking, I'm only writing this once. Now, we will be releasing a video on how to save money while writing the MCAT and applying to med school, so just make sure that you're subscribed and turn on the notification bell so that you're the first to know when we finally post that video. So the next thing you need to do is figure out how to approach it. Some people use a course as Luke did initially, uh, but as you saw, you get what you put into those courses. Also, some people might learn better with self-study than from a teacher. And by fourth year of undergrad, I knew that I was one of those people. Also, they can cost up to $3,000. I was way too broke for that. I didn't know this at the time, but the Community of Support offers a free MCAT prep course for members only. So if you are an individual who is underrepresented in medicine and you think you can benefit from a course but just can't afford it, make sure you click the links below, register, join our community, and you can get access to just some amazing resources. Decide on what books to use. So do your research, Google the types of books, and read what other students have said about them. Um, some books do go more into more detail than necessary, but would be good for those who need that extra context to learn. So just make sure you're very clear in what you're getting before you buy. I use the entire Kaplan set for mine. Um, you look use a combination of Kaplan and Princeton books. And I just, I really like Kaplan because it came with three practice tests and a bonus test. This video is not sponsored at all. We are just sharing our honest opinions. Now, over the course of your studying, you should be completing between 7 and 11 practice tests if you have as much time as I did. So I did 7, looked at 10, uh, you can do 5, you can even do 12, it's really up to each person but the idea is the more tests you do, the better. You can get tests from different sources like I said, um, I, I got 4 tests from Kaplan, but my other tests were from the AAMC packages. I highly recommend that at least three of your tests be AAMC tests. They create the MCAT, and so their practice exams are the most like the real thing. So just save the AAMC tests to be the last ones that you complete before you write the actual tests. Now, you want to take these tests in the most MCAT-like environment that you can. Now, the best environment is a library on the bulky library computers, but of course, you don't always have access to that. And especially right now, we do definitely do not have access to that. But more important than the location is the timing. You have to take the tests, the practice tests, exactly how it will be that day, or at least to the best of your ability to re recreate what will be happening that day. So you want to wake up at the time that you would be that day, you want to eat the same breakfast you're planning on eating, wear comfy clothes that are either the same ones or similar to what you'll be wearing that day. And if you're going to a library, then leave at the same time you would have to on the day of the exam. And even if you're not going anywhere and you're staying home to do this, sit down for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, however long that it actually takes 
that you know it's going to take you to like, drive to your location, sit down for that amount of time and just wait. The exam also doesn't allow any food or water while writing, so just don't be drinking water and eating snacks while you're practicing. The reason it's so important to do this is because you'll start to notice things that don't work for you. Like your clothes may be too warm or too itchy. You may be hungry at the wrong time. You can change those over time. The key here is to really minimize as many external variables as possible so that your MCAT score reflects the scores that you've been getting on your practice test. And you also start to build your stamina. Now stamina is something that really affects people on the MCAT. It's a long exam and your brain is working consistently for six hours. It's exhausting and you wanna be ready for that. So the first thing that you do before anything else is take a baseline test and you will likely do poorly and it will be uncomfortable. And I tried to avoid this by reviewing everything first, but I still did poorly and it was just a waste of time. So sit with your discomfort, write the first one, get your score, and from there, you can start studying based off what you don't know. You need to spend some time reviewing each question and what the correct answer was and why. So this is when you use your books and other resources like Khan Academy, YouTube, etc. So after you've gone through the whole thing and made your notes, then just keep repeating this process for the whole study period. And you want to create a calendar from the start depending on how many tests you have and how much time you have. So if you have four months and seven tests like I did, you may want to start out the first few months by taking a test every three weeks. Then after that, you may want to go up to every two weeks or a week and a half. By a month to the exam, you want to be taking a test every week and reviewing over the course of the week. And as you get closer to the exam date, you shorten time between practice tests. This will be easier because hopefully each time you're getting less wrong and you have a bit less to review. You may even be able to review everything in a few days. And so that's when you throw in practice questions. Uh, the AAMC actually has practice sets that you can purchase. Um, and I've, I've heard that their practice questions are harder than the actual um, exam questions, which when I did it, I also felt that, but it really forces you to understand what you're doing and why. Um, but the books you buy may also have practice questions. Like the books I bought had practice questions and some companies might have a full book of just practice. So otherwise you can probably find free questions on sites like Khan Academy, um, but just be careful because if you spend time doing questions that are not MCAT level, then you may just be wasting your time. Okay, so there are lots of speculations about projected scores. So keep in mind that this is all speculation. I'm only really including it because I found it as a useful guide to know if I was falling in the range of where I wanted to be by the time of the exam. So based on this guide, Luke's projected score was um, a 514 on his third try and mine was a 510. Um, and his reach score, which is the score that he just really, really wanted, was a 515. And my reach score was a 513. And we obviously fell short of our reach scores. And the sting will never go away, no matter how hard you try to forget it. But we did do well overall. So, the week before your exam, you want to start winding things down, which I know is pre-meds. Like, this is when people really want to start ramping up and pulling longer hours. But if you've been consistent, this won't be necessary. So complete the review that from your last um, practice exam, maybe do some practice questions, review your notes, but take it easy overall. Tell yourself that you studied hard and now you've got this, or actually you studied smart, not hard. But the day for the exam, just do not study. Go to the gym, relax, spend some time with family or alone, like whatever makes you happy you don't really want to show up to your exam burnt out. You just spent months studying and working your brain to its fullest extent. Like It deserves a break. Okay, so we've talked a lot <laughs> and if you're still around, good for you. Um, but the sign of a good mentor is one that wants you to learn from their mistakes. We didn't get our reach scores, but we think that you can. First, you want to watch this video a few times. I'm gonna take note of the times I mentioned that we didn't do what we should. And then next, discipline is everything. Writing the MCAT sucks, especially when it's summer and all your friends are having a hot girl summer, but you have to stay indoors to study. Just remember what you're aiming for. On that note, balance is still very important. 
it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and any other cliche that you can think of to incorporate here. Like I tried to study from 9 to 3, um, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day at the beginning. And after that, I was free to do whatever I wanted. I also took weekends off at the start. And then closer to the exam, my stamina improved and I was waking up at 6 a.m. and studying till about 7 or 8 p.m. And again, I've said this so many times now, but do not waste time on the things that you already know. So the question is, did Luke and I rewrite? So first, let's talk about what a good score is. Um, so Luke scored in the 77th percentile. Um, and I scored in the 80th percentile. So that means that out of everyone who wrote, we did better than 77 or 80 percent of people. It, it's a good place to sit for most schools. But I recently spoke to a friend who will be applying next year who got a few points above me and even she wanted to rewrite. But we have to remember that your MCAT score does not define how smart you are. They're testing if you are able to learn, if you have the stamina required, um, if you're committed, or if you have critical thinking skills. Once you get to med school, you may see people who got scores even lower than we did sitting at the top of the class, and people who got very high scores might struggle. Just remember that multiple factors too can affect your performance. Like, I was so nervous the night before, I could not sleep. And I think I got maybe three or four hours of barely there shut eye, which, um, like, would I have done better if I slept through the whole night? Like, maybe, or maybe not. You might also be frazzled for some reason and mess up a section like I did. If you have what you need to apply to the schools of your choice, you do not need to rewrite, in my opinion. That being said, it is a personal choice. For perspective, with my score and an average to below average GPA, I was still able to apply to seven schools, interview at four of them, and get accepted to two of them. And, you know, if you want to know how I did this, just make sure you're subscribed because we have a lot of gems to share with you this application season. So the last thing that I want to touch on is taking care of yourself. And everyone I've ever talked to about taking the MCAT mentions how it takes a toll on your mental health and your physical health. And every time you do poorly on a practice test or have to miss a hangout with friends, it's hard to remember what we're working towards. But as much as I've said that you should approach this as if you only write it once, you also have to remember that getting a low mark is not the end of the world. This is why I wanted to contrast mine and Luke's experiences. He wrote three times and is now in the first year of medical school as well. So prioritize your well-being through this whole process and remember that the better you feel, the better a doctor that you can be to your future patients. Okay, wow, you really stuck around till the end. This was definitely a long one. I hope it was useful. Thanks so much for watching y'all and let us know how you felt about this narrative style. Um, if you made it through this whole video and still haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for because you're obviously ready to be part of the community of support. 